Hey guys, today we're going to do an overview of the Neptune System solenoid valve. Okay guys, this is the Neptune uh, solenoid valve. Uh, there isn't a lot of information on this on the internet, so I thought I'll do this quick video about how to install it, uh, what you can do with it, what you can't do with it, and <laughs> it turns out that there's a lot of things you can't do with it. So there is, there's a few disclaimers that you need to know before you buy this. Uh, but very simply, it's a, you know, it's a small little, uh, small, it's not super small, but yeah, that's what it looks like. It's a couple of maybe three inches tall, uh, three inches, uh, uh, two inches wide. Uh, it's got these uh, uh, quick connect for uh, the, like your standard quarter inch RODI uh, tubing and it could be installed directly into your uh, power bar if you have the newer Apex. So it could plug in directly into your uh, uh, power bar and uh, you have two uh, 24 volt uh, uh, inlets back here, they're called A and B. And once it's plugged in into your APIS controller, you could essentially control the valve using this button. This is uh, uh, link B and um, on essentially close, opens the valve and auto or off will close the valve. So uh, the valve, the solenoid valve is uh, normally closed and you have to turn it on to open the valve. So here is something that you need to know about this valve. Uh, in all the product literature that I've seen on it, it says that you could essentially use this valve to control water movement in and out of your aquarium. And you know, it's a pretty generic statement. Uh, but when I read some of the online reviews, apparently this thing is not uh, really good for moving salt water. And I emailed Neptune and they did confirm uh, that this is designed to uh, be used only with uh, RODI water uh, and it's not designed to be used with salt water. So I was a little bit upset about this because A, uh, <laughs> it's Neptune, right? They make reef controllers and, and what the hell are they doing making a valve that is not going to take salt water? Uh, it's a little bit disappointing, right? You kind of assume that Neptune's uh, <laughs> Is going to make stuff for salt water tank but but this valve is not meant to be used for salt water uh, the other thing that that uh, the other reason i was annoyed by this is that nowhere under product advertising or or any of the people that sell this valve mentioned that this is not meant to be used uh, with uh, salt water so why did i get the apex valve to begin with so remember that i'm trying to set up an automatic water changing system using the apex dos and the idea is uh, I'm gonna run a tube from my sump and have it run down to the basement where the dose is. And uh, the reason I have the dose in the basement is I don't wanna keep the dose in the sump because in the future I anticipate running an elk monitor in my cabinet, so I wanna keep the space free. And uh, so the dose will pull up water from the sump and put it in a waste container so that way I could possibly reuse my dirty tank water for my frack tank. And the dose is going to pump uh, clean water from a, a, a salt water reservoir up back into the sump. So this is all fine and dandy, uh, but the concern here is that what if the dose fails and I get a gravity siphon that will essentially drain all of the water from my sump? So the dose pump is uh, is. Uh, a type of a peristaltic pump and essentially what inside the dose is this motor here and there's a tube and the motor kind of pinches uh, squeezes the water through the dosing head so to speak uh, this is from Wikipedia by the way and in theory during this entire cycle that there's always one part of the tube that is being pinched and therefore we don't have an open siphon. It's a, it's a controlled motion. And when the pump stops, there's gonna be, uh, the, the hose is gonna be pinched shut uh, in, in some part of the motor head here. That's in theory, but in reality, uh, we've, I've heard of stories of even really high quality like industrial pumps that, uh, which fail 
over time the tubing inside the pump might wear down uh, the motor might wear down so yeah, I I just don't want to like have to rely on the pump sealing uh, the slime mm -hmm. preventing a gravity siphon because uh, if it fails then I'm, I'm dealing with a major catastrophe and so I want to engineer a way that kind of prevents uh, where even if the pump fails I want to have a safety stop that essentially prevents this gravity siphon from uh, draining my sump so the initial idea was I was going to use the solenoid valve uh, as the line goes up from the sump I was going to connect it to a valve here and then whenever the dose is not doing a water change I was going to shut down close this valve essentially preventing any water from uh, going down the stoop if the pump fails so this the valve on this line here would have been my uh, safety stop uh, but this is no longer an option because uh, Apex does not recommend we run salt water through their solenoid valve. So it took me a little bit of thinking and I had to consult with uh, uh, my, uh, uh, my uh, neighbor and friend uh, Wally B on the forums. He's uh, an engineer and, and uh, he actually came up with this uh, really cool idea. So the idea is to still use a solenoid, but instead of connecting it directly into the salt water line, to actually have a T here and have the, the valve be kind of upstream uh, of this tube and have it control air intake into this line. So under normal circumstances, the valve, oh, not under normal circumstances, but when I'm trying to engage the dose to do my water changes, then the idea is to close this valve, uh, sealing this tube, and allowing the dose to essentially pull, the pull a prime and pull the water through here into the dosing container. Now, when the water chain cycle is done, what I do then is open the valve, allowing air to enter, and if the dose pump fails, then air will essentially run through this tube and prevent uh, gravity siphon from developing. All right, so here's a system that uh, we think might do the trick for preventing a gravity siphon. So this is going to represent my sump, and again, I'm sucking dirty water from my sump through a tube here, uh, through the dose. And what we're going to do is essentially have this line go through a T here with one tube connected to the valve upstream of, uh, of my sump. All right. And then this is not connecting to anything. Then I'm going to take my line and run it down through the basement to my container down in the basement that is now going to collect my dirty tank water. So the idea here is that in its normal state, this valve is in a closed position. So when the dose starts to suck water from here, it's gonna be able to pull a prime and be able to move the water down in the basement. But when I'm done with the water change, what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna program this to open. And when this opens, whenever the dose is sucking water from here, it's gonna start sucking in air and that's gonna break a siphon. So even if the dose pump fails, or somebody knocks the tube in the basement, there's gonna be air that gets sucked in from the valve into the line and that will stop the siphon, uh, that will create a siphon break. So that's in theory how it works. So I'm gonna show you now what I mean by, by doing this little experiment. So I'm gonna essentially start water here to create a gravity siphon. So I've engineered a gravity siphon here. So water is draining from this cup, which represents my sump, and is going down uh, into my collection container. And what I want to do now is test whether by opening this valve, letting air in through this line, whether this is going to stop the gravity siphon. And so let's give it a try here. So we go into the apex and we click on. And there it is. So you see that now air, this, this valve opened, letting air into this line, preventing the gravity siphon. Uh, let's close it and, and try it again. All right, so the line is closed. I'm going to start another siphon. All right, so here we have another siphon. 
So here we have another siphon and I'm going to go here and turn on the valve, open the valve. And there it goes. So tell me what you think of this idea. Uh, I, I think it has merit, but if, if you have uh, any other insights or, or reasons why this uh, might not work, uh, please let me know. And hopefully next video, you're gonna get to see the dose doing automatic water changes in action.